We're continuing this series called Staycation, and really it was just an opportunity for us to kind of preach about what we wanted to. And uh, so the other day I was at the house and I was trying to get into one of the kids' rooms, the little kids' room, and um, they, they, they share a, a Jack and Jill bathroom. You know what that means? Like there's two rooms and then they kind of share a bathroom. And uh, I, was, I was trying to get into their door and I started pushing on the door and it, it wouldn't completely open. It wasn't locked, but it just wouldn't open. Like it would give a little and then bounce back and give a little and bounce back. And I just kept pushing and I don't know why in my mind Maybe it's just the guy side that just like, I'm gonna, I thought I was gonna take it off the hinges. I could have gone through Abigail's room, now I'm giving away who it is, into Jonas's room and figure out what was lodging, what was blocking this door from opening. And, but I just stood there and just kept pushing and pushing. And I was like, one moment I was like, I think I'm gonna take the hinges off this door because these things aren't that strong. I, I better walk around and figure out what it was. And I figured out what it was. It was this massive stuffed animal. Like he has this, like he has a stuffed animal that maybe would come up to here on him. And it was behind the door. And when I pushed, it got hung up under it. And that's why it would give a little, but it wouldn't completely open. I started thinking about this as it relates to some of us. And I know I've been here before where I felt like I'm believing God for something and I'm trusting God for something. It's like I'm at the door and it's not closed to me, but I'm pushing, but it's like it bounces back. It's like there's something lodged behind the door and maybe you've been in that place, maybe you're there today where you're like, man, I've been believing God for a breakthrough and I've been believing God to, to do exceedingly abundant. I hear the verse, I believe it, everybody quotes it, that's wonderful. But I feel like I'm at this door. Maybe it's a, a door of opportunity. Maybe it's a, a door of a relationship. Maybe it's a door of a job. Maybe it's a door of something you've just been believing for that only you and God know. And you feel like you're pushing on it and you believe it's not the problem. Faith isn't the problem. You, you believe that he's the God of exceeding abundantly and above all that you could ask or imagine. You believe that he is the way maker. You believe that he makes crooked paths straight. You believe that he is the God that parts waters, that takes down giants with a stone. You, 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 you're good on all the belief part, but you still feel like you're pushing and it won't open. Here's what I want you to consider today is this, is could it be just like that stuffed animal had to be dislodged for me to open the door, could it be that what is stopping you is you need to dislodge dishonor? Could it be that you need to dislodge dishonor? Could it be, I'm just asking you to consider today, could it be that dishonor in your heart now, I know this ain't gonna be a popular message in our culture, but it could be dishonor in your heart is what is prohibiting the supernatural in your life. Because faith isn't the problem, knowing the scripture may not be the problem, but could it be that dishonor is disrupting the supernatural in your life? And I wanna take you to the Bible. Maybe you're thinking, well, dishonor doesn't affect the supernatural. I want you to go to the scriptures with me. Mark chapter six. If you have a Bible, you can open it or you can get on the app. Um, I'd encourage you to download the YouVersion app. You can get on there, download the LifePoint app. You can get Bible access on there. Um, but Mark chapter six, now we need to back up a little bit. If you're with me, say amen. Come on, every campus. Mark chapter five, Jesus is doing some amazing things. I mean, he is healing sick people. He, he cast out demon, y'all. Like he did some like exorcism, like, like get the demon out. Like some of your parents, you've tried that with your children. It wasn't a demon, it was candy. Um, but, but Mark chapter five, Jesus is doing some, I mean, just mind blowing, God moving, people never seen kind of miracles. Then you get to chapter six, Verse one, and look what the scripture says. It says, Jesus left there. There is Mark chapter five, we were just in, where he's doing all these amazing miracles. He just left there and he went back to his hometown. He went back to where he was familiar and accompanied by his disciples. So the whole crew is making their way back. And when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. So the same Jesus in Mark chapter five that had the power to heal is the same Jesus in Mark chapter six who is now teaching in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed 
In other words, he's still doing amazing things, just like he was in Mark chapter five. He hadn't changed his mode of operation. Where did this man get these things, they ask? In other words, he has revelation we've never heard of. Where did he get the ability to teach this and have this insight and see this? And the Bible says, what's this wisdom that has been given to him that he even does miracles? So they even knew about his power. They heard the stories. Understanding, hearing his teaching, seeing the miracle working power of God was not the issue for them. Isn't this the carpenters? Isn't that his son? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. So they heard his teaching, they knew the word, they saw the miracles, they didn't believe. They didn't have a problem in faith. They had a problem that he was one of them. And it said, Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor, without honor, dishonor, without honor. And listen to this. He could, everybody shout it with me every campus. He could not. Pause. Jesus could not. Let that sink in for a minute. Doesn't say Jesus would not. Doesn't say Jesus didn't want to. It says Jesus could not. What couldn't he do? Any miracles. Except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He could only deal with a few headaches and a cough. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. He was amazed at their dishonor. Let that sink in for a minute. They had access to the son of God. Like up close and personal. They had access to the son of God. They talked to him, they see him, they could touch him. They could ask for anything. I mean, think about it. They really could have. I don't know that Jesus would have done it for them, but they could have made the request for anything. They could have said, you know, my sister is sick. He, she's not even here, heal her. And Jesus could have said the words and she could have been healed. They could have asked for some kind of blessing on their life. They could have asked for a child. They could have asked for a spouse. Come on, my single people. They could have asked Jesus for anything in that moment and had the access to the supernatural, but their dishonor caused them to not receive in chapter six what another group got in chapter five. Because until you dishonor, Lodge dishonor, you don't receive the supernatural. And for some of you, you've been pushing on a door, asking God, begging God, and if you would just change what your thumbs are typing, maybe the supernatural would flow into your life. Because an atmosphere of dishonor disrupts the supernatural, but an atmosphere of honor releases the supernatural. When I see Jesus for who he is, when I look at him not as Mary's boy, but as God's only begotten of son, it releases the supernatural into my life. The, the word here where it says without honor, that, that is one Greek word which is the Greek word atomos. If you, you wanna write that down, if you're a note taker, write that down. If not, write it down. Atomos, it means to dishonor, to treat as common or ordinary. I want you to notice something. Without honor isn't being ugly. Because some of us think that we dishonor whenever we're ugly or we say rude things or we're negative or we're mean or we cut somebody down or we cancel somebody or we say something that, that's hurtful about them or to them and, 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 and dishonor is not that. Dishonor is simply when I first got the job, I showed up early and I brought my very best to it and I was thanking God for it. Dishonor is whenever I just roll up and be like, oh, I gotta go there again. Okay, we'll leave your job alone. It's when you first got married and you was bringing her coffee in bed and you was like, man, this woman the Lord gave me, isn't God good? And then all of a sudden it's like, you can get your own coffee in. 
it's that it begins to be treated as common. It's when you first came to the house of God and he changed your life and touched your heart. You couldn't wait to serve and you couldn't wait to bring the tithe and return the tithe and you couldn't wait to be in a small, you couldn't wait to be on serve weekend. And then it's like, ah, I think, well, I don't know if we're gonna go this week. We may go to the Blake, but, uh, and I know I'm getting up into your business. I'm just saying dishonor, I think we think is whenever we attack people and we have vitriol and we have words that should not come out of our mouth, but it can just be that we just begin to go, it's another part of my life. Without honor means to treat as common or ordinary. The Bible uses the word honor 147 times, most of the time talking about our relationship with other people. So we treat things, we treat places, we treat people without honor. He's Mary's son, isn't he? Isn't he Joseph's brother? He ain't nobody special. Dishonor. They ain't nobody special. Dishonor. The word honor comes from this word, not time. It comes from time. It's a, it's a Greek transliter, transliteration. It's a, in other words, it's an English version of the Greek word. And this, this word honor means this, to value, respect, or highly esteem. To treat as precious weighty or valuable. Watch this, I love this, to fix value. It means that in my life, honor, honor is a choice of my will. Honor's based on my character, not someone else's conduct. Which means I can fix value on someone that disagrees with me and not dishonor. Oh, I know in our public discourse today, because we're in the age of outrage. And we're in the age of I'm supposed to have an opinion about everything and I'm supposed to cut everybody and cancel everybody and let everybody and give them a piece of my mind. I've always said, I've got limited bandwidth. I can't give you any of my mind. I need all of it. I'm not that smart, y'all. And so it's in the age of, of I've got it. And, and it's like, no, no, no. I'm gonna determine I can fix value on you. I can, I can disagree with you, but I can honor you. Because honor isn't about how you behave or how you vote. It's not about what you like or don't. I can honor, because I am an honorable person, because I've made the choice to fix value on you. Well, pastor, why would you fix value on somebody else? Well, because they're made in the image of God. And if God thought enough of them for them to bear his image, then who am I to think less of them? I should bring honor. Come on, put your hands together, church, every campus. I should bring honor to the table. It's about value. What do I fix value on? We, we lose honor when we begin to lose the value of something. When we begin to lose the value of our marriage, when we begin to not see the value of our job, when we not see the value of our friendships, relationships around us, when we lose the value of the house of God. Like may, may we never dishonor God when we say we baptized a hundred people. I learned today over 20,000 people in our history have said yes to Jesus. May we never dishonor God like, that's awesome. No, we fix value on the work of God in the house of God. And we say, wow, God, look what the Lord has done and is continuing to do. Oh, I honor you, God. So I'll clap, I'll shout, I'll honor you, I'll express. Because I fix value on that. Could it be that if you would dislodge dishonor, it would open the supernatural in your life. You know what I found is that most of the time people begin to lose honor for others when they focus on their humanity and not their identity. He's Mary's son. Depends on what you see. Is he Mary's son or is he the Messiah? It's all about how you see it. And how you value and see people matters because how you perceive them determines what you can get from them or receive from them. So they could not receive from Jesus because they perceived him as Mary's son. But if they'd have perceived him as the son of God slain before the foundation of the earth with the ability to take away the sin of the world, they would have received something else. Listen to me, blind people walked away that day. Deaf people walked away that day. 
Sick people walked away that day and they encountered the Messiah. They came sick, walked away sick. Why? Because they couldn't dislodge dishonor because all they could see was his humanity. And we live in a culture that wants to put the humanity of people under the microscope. Well, they said this and they did that and they failed that. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. You can choose to look at someone's humanity or you can choose to look at their identity. They're a child of God, washed with the blood of Jesus, set on purpose by God. You choose what you fix value on. I've been out a few weeks, y'all, it's feeling good. I'm just proposing, could it be that if you would dislodge dishonor, it could open the supernatural? Could it be that if a church would dislodge dishonor, it would unleash the supernatural in a way you've never seen? And I know this isn't popular. I know that living with honor, speaking with honor, treating people with honor, it is not the cultural narrative that we currently reside in. But just because it's not in the culture does not mean it should not be in the house of God among the people of God. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye different, says the Lord. Not difficult, different. So if you wanna tear down somebody because you disagree with them, I wanna honor them while I disagree with them. If you wanna cancel somebody because you don't like what they posted, you don't have to follow them, but you can honor them. You can treat them as valuable, why? Because Jesus placed enough value on them to die. He fixed value on humanity. And the value he placed on them was the life, his own life. So who are we to do any less, right? So I'm gonna give you three areas of honor. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. I'm going to give you three areas of honor. There's so many, but I just think these are, these are three great starting points. Number one, and um, this, this will be no surprise to you, but number one is this, is honor God. Honor God. Start with honoring God. And maybe you think, well, pastor, of course we honor God. Now, how quickly, and I, I've, I've been here, and there's been moments and, and seasons where I've had to go, I'm treating God as common in my life. That... that it's just become common. The house of God's become common. The time in his presence has become common. Like, like I, 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 so, can I just be real with you, right? <laughs> I hope so. Several days without picking up the word of God. Why? Because it came common. Seasons where it's like my prayer life wasn't where it should be. Why? Because it's just common. You know what you do with common people? You, people you treat common, you'll be there. Oh, they'll be there when I get back. And he is, he's such a God of grace and mercy and kindness. And it's like, wow, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I was reading the judges today and it seems like over and over Israel's, and they forgot the Lord, their God, and then God rescued them. I was like, what a God of grace, like over and over and over they do this. But, but let, us, let us honor God in our hearts. Let us start with honoring, honoring God. The, the Bible says this, I, I just really the first part of the verse I want you to focus on. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. And then it goes on to talk about be prepared to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. But I love that first part. But in your hearts, set apart, honor. It's not common. It's, it's not just another box I check. God isn't just something else that's kind of part of my routine. No, I set you apart, God. You are holy. You are altogether other than anything else in my life. You're not in the list of things I do. You got your own list. Like, like you're over here. Like you are above all things, through all things, in through all things. All things have been created by you, for you, and through. Like, God, you are Jehovah God. And I'm just not talking about honor God. Like you gave me breath today and, and I got up out of the bed and I'm thankful to be alive. No, no, just who he is. Is. 
Not just what he does, God, I'm just gonna live a life of honor for just who you are, that you're holy and you're just and you're kind and your ways are above my ways and your ways are higher than my ways and your thoughts are well beyond my thoughts and, and God, that you, are, that you are the Jehovah God, that you are my banner, that are y'all following me, that, that you're the beginning and the end, that there never has been a time where you're not, never will be a time where you aren't. You existed outside of time, before time and well after time is done. God, I just honor you, God. I don't ever want to treat you as common. So may, may we check our hearts because there's a good chance if we're treating people as common, it started with treating God as common. So God, may I honor you. May I never, may I, may I never, may I never lose this like, May, may you never lose that, church. Your, your wildness for God, like, wow. Like, I got nothing else. I got no other words, just like, he's God. And then he loves me, and he saved me. But without all that, he's God. Like, like words came out of his mouth and galaxies formed. Wow, I'm not gonna treat you as common. I don't dishonor God. I don't I don't use the Lord's name in vain and, and I don't you know nah, it's just it's just he's become routine. Now nah, let's don't let that happen in our heart. Every so often we need a heart check, it just goes, Wow, God, I, I thank you. Just who you are. I'm not gonna I'm gonna treat you as valuable. I'm gonna treat my time with you as valuable. I'm gonna set it apart from every other part of my, like with you in your presence, God, I honor you. Could it be that dishonor is disrupting the supernatural in your life? Could it be that those things you've been pushing so hard to make happen, if you dislodge dishonor, God could make it happen like that. Number two, number two, give me three thoughts. Number two is honor God's work. Honor God's work. Uh, the Bible says this when I, I memorized when I was a kid, First Corinthians. So whether therefore I grew up on King James. Come on, somebody. Y'all still with me, church, every campus. Come on, we grew up on the King James. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. In other words, whatever you're doing, do it as work unto God. And so therefore I'm gonna honor the work of God. Follow me on this, everything you do. I'm just not talking about your job. I'm not talking about when you serve on a dream team. I'm not talking about just when you serve weekend or, or, you, or you decide to join the youth conference dream team or whatever it may be. I'm talking about everything in your life, whether therefore I eat or I drink, everything. God, I'm just gonna honor your work in my life. I'm gonna honor the work you're doing in our church family. God, I'm gonna honor the work that you're doing through me because God, if you allow him, is always working. Like you're a minister wherever you go, into your job, into your neighborhood into your school, God, everywhere, and I'm gonna honor the work. I'm gonna honor, I'm not gonna treat it as, I get to do this today. I get to serve today. I get to pray with someone today. I get to be the light of Jesus today. I get to listen to someone, offer counseling today. I'm not talking about church staff. I'm talking about you and your school in the fall and you and your neighborhood. God, I get to be used by you today and I'm gonna honor the work of God that is happening in and through me. I'm not gonna see people as a problem. I'm not gonna see people in my life as an obstacle I've gotta get over and get past. No, I'm gonna see it as the God, I wanna honor the work of God. God, you're working all the time. You're working around me all the time. You're working through me all the time. And here's the deal, like God's not up in heaven going, I really hope they'll do it because if they don't, it won't get done. No, God will find somebody else. Watch this though. If dishonor disrupts the atmosphere of the supernatural and honor releases the atmosphere of the supernatural, then when you dishonor, you lose. Because you miss out on what God supernaturally could do in your life. And so God's not up in heaven just hoping you'll honor his work in and through your life. He'll get somebody else to do it. He's more than happy to bless somebody else. 
Seriously, he's, he's more than happy to follow. He's not a God who um, is a respecter of person, but he is of principle. Yeah. And he'll follow through on his promises. And so what are you missing out? Because you've allowed dishonor to lodge. You've allowed dishonor to, in your comments. Dishonoring God, dishonoring the work of God. Let me give you one more. Are you with me? Say amen. Number, number three, and... Um, and this is the one, the word honor talks about 147 times, almost all of them, and it's honor each other. I don't know how much more plain to make it than 1 Peter 2, 17. Honor all people. I mean, let me read that again in case some of you missed it. A little slow in the uptake. Honor all people. Hey, every campus, come on, online, everywhere. Everybody say it with me out loud together. Ready? Honor all people. You mean that person that honor all? <laughs> you mean that one that I work with and they keep posting and, and they said this to me and this? Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. I just <laughs> felt like that needed that like accent. <laughs> honor all people. So what Peter is telling us is that the mark of a believer, a Christian, is they honor all people. So we honor in the way that we speak. We honor in the way that we post. We honor in the way that we comment. We honor in the way that we treat people. We honor in the way that we interact with people. We show honor. Well, pastor, does that mean I just have to like hold my tongue and bite my tongue all the time? Well, depends on how bad your tongue is. You may have to bite it a lot. I'm not saying you can't disagree. I'm just saying Christians shouldn't be disagreeable people. It should be honorable people. I'm not saying you, can have, you can't have differences. I'm saying it's how you express those differences that could dislodge and open the door to the supernatural in your life. It, Jesus wasn't limited. His power wasn't limited. Their awareness of his teachings was not limited. Their access was not limited. The only thing that kept them from experiencing the supernatural is they were without honor. And so where in your life as dishonor creeped in. And I, I'm not talking about being mean or nasty or ugly or backbiting. No, no, if you're doing that, turn from that, repent, ask for forgiveness. I'm asking, where has it become common? Where has God become common? Where has the work of God become common? Where have other people in your life become common? That could be what is keeping you from experiencing the supernatural. Maybe today, you would determine, it's your choice, to fix value once again, to show honor to God, to the work of God, and to the people that God has put into your life. They saw his humanity, missed his identity. And because of it, they missed the supernatural. Let that not be true for you. You received the word today. Come on, every location, online. Hey, let's pray together. If you would, bow your head, close your eyes. We wanna honor this moment. It's a valuable moment. It's a holy moment. It's a moment when people are responding to the work of God in their life, and man, it's amazing. And there's some of you here today at one of our campuses, maybe online, and God has been an add-on, a box to check, but he's never become the Lord of your life. You've never stood in awe of him. Never realized your need for him. 
You've never appropriately honored him as Lord. And today I wanna give you the opportunity to do that. Maybe today in your heart, you know that you're far from God. You don't need me to tell that to you. You don't need another verse, you know. But there's a distance, there's a gap between you and God. There doesn't have to be. The Bible tells us that God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sin and for my sin. And to give us a brand new start, a brand new beginning. And today I wanna give you that opportunity to have a fresh start to honor God as Lord, to say, Lord, I've done it my way, I've tried it my way, I'm surrendering to you, I I give my life to you. And the Bible tells us that the moment you do that, your sins are forgiven. Your name is written, literally there's a book in heaven and your name is written in it. All of heaven throws a party and you begin a journey of walking with Jesus. And so if that's you today at every location, in just a moment, we're gonna pray together out loud. You won't be pointed out. No one's gonna come to you. We wouldn't embarrass you for the world. But in just a moment, we're gonna pray together. But I wanna know who's making that decision today. You would say, that's me, Pastor. And so I'm gonna count to three in just a second. When I do, you shoot your hand up just high enough, long enough for your campus pastor to see. On three, you do it. This is your day. Today's your day. This is your moment. And I just believe your hand going up is just an act of faith. It's a sign of faith of, yes, that's me. I believe, I want a fresh start, I want a new beginning. So if that's you on three, you just shoot your hand up. One, two, three, you just shoot it up. High enough, long enough. Awesome. Church, let's pray together out loud for the benefit of those who just lifted their hand or maybe online, they're making that decision today. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. Today, I honor you as Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing me. In Jesus' name, everybody said a big amen. Amen. Come on, church, let's put our hands together. Hey, we hope today's message spoke to your situation and was helpful to your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're posting new content every week. And also, if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can click the link below. You know, it's thanks to the generosity of people like you that we're able to meet the needs of people all over the world. So thank you for making a difference and helping deliver this message to the people that need it most. And thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon.